Hi, this is Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews, and I just got back from the awards ceremony where Mel Jean Brook won for Best Book of the Year. The RT editors, um, through all of our picks for all of 2012, we decided that Riveted is the one that we want all of our readers to read because it was our absolute favorite. Um, thank you so much for coming and, and accepting the award. It was so great to see you up there. Um, and one of the things um, that you spoke about at the ceremony is having your daughter in the audience and the message that you wanted to give her. Can you tell everybody about that? Um, well, basically, I write. Um, I try to write very strong heroines, and and part of that is is because I know that when my daughter grows up, she'll probably read my books, or I hope she does, and enjoys them. And and I. I, I think that you know there's a message that gets sent with every book, um, uh, and who you know is rewarded at the end of, uh, and they get their happily ever after. And so I want her to have this message of it doesn't matter who she is, whether she's um, you know a person who's absolutely always sure of herself, or whether she makes a lot of mistakes, or um, whatever you know whatever she becomes, um, it's okay. You know she she deserves a happily ever after. She deserves to be um, to get what she what she wants out of life and so that's really the message I want her to um, receive through my books when she eventually reads them but then of course I also just like writing these types of characters anyway so well let's let's talk about riveted because even though it's technically can be classified as steampunk there's airships there's very cool Victoriana with you know the outfits and everything else uh -huh. it goes so much further than the, just that because there are social issues and there are there's a mystery and there's fighting and there's there's everything going on when you sat down to write the series the IMC series did you say okay I'm gonna tackle head-on a character who is bisexual I'm gonna tackle head-on a character who has made such bad mistakes in the past that they can't, they feel like they can't redeem themselves? Or was it just, I'm writing an adventure and let's see where it takes me? It's kind of all um, connected. Um, I really wanted the series to be an adventure series and I wanted it to be, you know, full of romance and, and have all these elements in it. So that the mystery, um, I wanted all of that in there. But um, part of steampunk, just, just by being steampunk, the punk part of that is, is that social critique a aspect. And so, and I think also because it's it's a science fiction genre, and science fiction is you know well known for taking you know current issues and grappling with them in in a, a, a futuristic sense. But steampunk it does it in a historical sense, and I'm not I don't have to be married to um, historical accuracy in the same way that say a historical author would be. So I can take those elements and I can play with them and I can you know blow them up or. And, and that is deliberate. I, I like to include that, but I, I think it's also, you know, it makes the, the stories more interesting and deeper, and and in many ways more difficult to, to, um, you know, to to give them their happily ever after in in an honest way because they have so much to overcome. Um, my first book, The Iron Duke, um, Mina was of course dealing with racism and all of the the issues that that brought um, into her life on on a daily basis. It wasn't, and it wasn't an easy an easy resolution and, and, and there's still problems at the end because of course it's not, not there's it doesn't go are, away yeah these are things right. that are not easy, easily solved and so I did want to tackle those issues in in these books but also because they are such heavy issues you know to bring in that really fun aspect of of the airships and and the giant squid mm -hmm. and the and the giant sharks <laughs> <laughs> And uh, volcanoes being shot to the moon, uh, or I mean, rockets, volcan rockets being shot to the moon out of volcanoes. So, um, yeah, this is this is all stuff that I that I did intend to include, um, and not to ignore the social aspect of it too. Well, and also, Riveted takes place on Iceland. I don't think I've ever read a steampunk on Iceland, or part of it takes place in yeah. Iceland. And I was like, what an interesting setting, because in your world, uh -huh. Iceland, and there's there's yeah. myths about the island, about it's dangerous, and there's monsters, and don't, and, and you introduce us to those monsters, and they're not quite what you would think they are. <laughs> well, that was, um, uh, the, the series is an alternate history series. Um, and so I have to kind of reimagine a history for pretty much every part of the world. And um, Iceland was one of those um, places where it's, it was a kind of in between the old world and the new world. So it was a setting that I could use. And plus, um, the 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 premise of the I guess the premise of the mystery and um, one of the the primary events that happens is a volcanic eruption. And, and so, of course, the the natural um, setting of Iceland was perfect for it because you know, um, I talked I talked about. Um, in in the in the 18th century, there was you know these 
there were these uh, volcanic explosions and, and a bunch of people did die and, and livestock you know, died off. And so it was nice to incorporate those natural events because those are things that you, even though it's alternate history, it's not going to change. I mean, uh, uh, Krakatoa is going to explode no matter what's ha what else is happening in the world. So, so I could incorporate the real, you know, physical, geographical, or uh, geological history um, and then use it to, you know, build up my plot and, and to have that real life interaction with history, but um, at the same time, playing with it quite a bit. So. Another thing you play with a little bit is is the idea of what a hero is, mm -hmm. because your heroine, um, Annika, she is she is a mechanic. She's kind of an electrical genius, and she can kind of fix anything, if you will. And she's kind of rough and tumble, and she's always covered in grease and everything else. Whereas your hero, he's a little more kind of the suit wearing. Um, he's a volcanologist, so he's a scientist, mm -hmm. and um, he also he has lost some body parts in in a volcano a volcanic eruption, uh -huh. and and so he is he has some machinery in the and and that you know kind of for his legs and things like that, and his uh -huh. in his eye, and that for him. Him, he has to start questioning who I am. Am I because I've got machines on me, and she's fixing things? And am I the hero? Like, and, and that adds like a whole other dimension to this relationship that they start to build. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really an interesting thing that you did with like his masculinity, because he's definitely still like a swoon-worthy hero, but he's a lot different than maybe what you'd expect from a romance novel. Well, um, you know, I, it's funny because every book I write, I think I need to like fit the hero into a certain mold, and and. And as I begin writing, I realize that they're falling farther and farther outside of this mold, and, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be such a mess. But, but um, a character like David, um, yeah, he was he was badly injured, and and it affected the way that people around um, around him saw who he was, and 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 it wasn't necessarily so much um, how he saw himself because he was just you know he was still himself, but everybody treated him differently, and so he had to decide. Um, you know, he, he really had to determine who he was going to be, and and he he knows who he is before he meets the heroine, and I think I think that's um, you know I think that is a very heroic thing to to kind of shrug off well not and it's not easy but to shrug off what society expects of him and and what and what they say is a, a strong man or um, you know what is heroic or what is masculine and to say you know what I'm I am who I am and um, so I think it's a different kind of strength and um, he was a lot of fun to write you know he was he was like a nice guy he was, he was a nice guy and that's my favorite <laughs> I love I love the guys that you'd actually want to hang out with like I don't want to slap you I want to give you a hug yeah yeah but it was still really sexy you know? oh, of course of course <laughs> Um, and super intelligent, which is another yeah. thing for me. Is like I love the smarties. <laughs> yeah. So um, he has this really caring personality, and I think, and he has this this strength. And um, you know, I, I do love to. I mean, all of my heroes are are different in many ways, but um, but okay. he was really special in that he was he was um, he was tortured in a in a different way, and um, but you know, it came out the stronger for it. So. Well, everyone knows like our favorite book at RT, Book of the Year. Um, can you share what you felt like it last year when you were reading? What's one of your favorite books that you came upon? Oh my goodness. Um, it's really yeah. difficult because I've been like writing so much. I, I haven't <laughs> been reading. Like I have this huge pile of books to read from recommendations, from, from reviews, from RT, you know, the top picks, and just from around the internet. And um, uh, But books I actually got to read... Um, my my friend Ilona Andrews, I get to say she's my friend. <laughs> um, her her series, um, you know, the Edge series, uh, Steel's Edge, was was fabulous, and and Gunmetal Magic, and I did get to read those because she she sent them to me, <laughs> and and I was like, I'm gonna read these. So I thought those were fabulous books, but she's yeah. you know regularly just just incredible. Um, I read um, Gone Girl uh, by Gillian mm -hmm. Flynn, and. Um, Actually, what's funny is, as is, is much as I enjoyed that book for all of its twists and turns and, and, and having, you know, speaking of, of characters that are, you know, kind of difficult and um, I really enjoyed that book because I hated the characters so much and I enjoyed, <laughs> I know, right? I enjoyed disliking <laughs> the characters. Um, but I read a, a few of her uh, backlist books as well and, and her Dark Places book was, you know, one of my favorite books of the year and I thought that was really fabulous. Oh, so we've got Riveted, Mel Jean Brooke, and then we also have Iona Andrews to check out and Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. So we've got a lot of different, a lot of different recommendations but Riveted was our favorite and we just want to say thank you so much for coming to the conference and, and getting your award because it means so much to us that, um, that you keep writing the series and I, of course I'm going to have to ask what's next 
next for the Iron Seas? Uh, next for the Iron Seas, um, I have a couple of short stories coming out. Um, uh, in uh, actually this month, uh, we're self-publishing. Uh, I'm self-publishing. Um, uh, a short story called Wrecked, and it's going to be in the Fire and Frost anthology. And then um, the Enthalled anthology comes out from Berkeley in uh, July, and it has um, a story called Salvage, which is uh, another hero who's who's too sweet, to live. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a lot of fun. And then. Um, uh, ne the next novel will be um, either late 2013 or early 2014, and it's called um, The Kraken King. And um, if you've been following along the series, it stars uh, Zenobia Fox, who is Archimedes Fox's sister, and they're going to go down to Australia and have their adventures there. So, oh, so Australian next. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really fun book. So Okay, well, once again, I want to say thank you so much for being here, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you.